All right, welcome. Uh oh. I got my mic feeding back again. Let me, uh, okay, I don't need that. Okay. Mm, okay, I see where I, where I did that. Okay, well, anyway, um, welcome, folks. That was a track that um, I made with some of the stuff we've been um, fooling around with over the past month or, or two. Uh, I've just been recording everything, all my jams. Um... Let me clean up this template a little bit. Get rid of stuff we're not using. Um, so yeah, yesterday I was just gonna fiddle around, fiddle around with some stuff, and um, I ended up um, making making a track. Um, for like six hours i should have live streamed it but by the time i realized that it was way too late i was like almost done um and that's the track that i made last night with just whatever um uh, uh, i had in this little template that i've made here for doing this type of stuff and um yeah so kind of wanted to uh, poke around this a little bit and like show you like the process of how I did that. Um, oh, I'm very tired today. I went for a walk to Salvation Army and they didn't have any clothes. That, like, why are all men's pants the same? They're exactly the same. It's like we're all wearing the same fucking pants all the time. No, there's like, you can look at the women's section, there's like tons of different colors and like types of pants. But you look at the men's section, it's all slacks and bad jeans. Bad jeans. I hate jeans. Anyway, sorry for the little rant. That, that just, uh, I didn't find any clothes I wanted to wear. But I did find a little fake plant that uh, I carried home with me, which was nice. But, um... But yeah, let's see. Uh, so I got this little folder here. Um, here. Let me hide some of this stuff. So this is this is uh, how I have it set it up, set up for like uh, uh, jamming and stuff. Um, and uh, so I just will like have a spot and then. I just hit record and then I go, um, and, uh, check, 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 check it all out, yeah, check in the mic, check it, check it, check in the mic, check, check it, check it, check, check in the mic. Check it, check it, check it. And but yeah, anyway. So, yeah, I um, I was just listening back through uh, a bunch of this stuff and picking out, like, little pieces that I liked. And then I moved that from this little section here. Uh, I have another folder uh, called Sampler. And this is where I drag my samples into. And if we look here, um, here's like a little intro I made with a couple of pieces uh, um, that I found. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing else playing under here. Oops. Oh, one thing I found uh, uh, that is new to me, I think this might be a new feature, is if you 
use the scroll wheel on the little name here, you can scroll through all the colors. And I just discovered that, but it's too easy to do accidentally. Uh, so it's a little bit of annoying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's uh, move these samples over to a blank spot. Yeah, and so I found found these things. Uh, hold on, let me. So these are going to bus one. Where do I have bus one? I think it's hidden. Did I hide it? Bus one. Here we go. So on bus one, I'm gonna send this to my live stream out. This is my live stream bus, which is just this one right here. Um, anything that I want to reach your ears as the listener, I just route through here. And then I have this set to the actual physical outs on my uh, little Focusrite Scarlet 18i20. So these are outputs uh, 5 and 6, making a stereo pair. And those are physically routed with just quarter-inch cables around to the front of my interface for channel 1 and 2. Um, and OBS takes that and uh, streams it. Yeah. So inputs 1 and 2 are reserved specifically for uh, OBS streaming. Uh, let see here. Right here, live stream inputs. All right. But anyway, let's take a listen to this sample. Or not. Uh, let's see. So I need. Where's bus one? Where did I put it? Okay. So live stream out, and I also need to send this to the mains. So I'm going to send that to my mains bus as well, so we can, uh, uh, this mains bus, if I want to hear it over the speakers, this is where I send it to. Unless it's broken for some reason. Why, why can I not hear it? What is going on? What did I mess up? Okay. So we have... No input. It's routed to bus 1. Okay. So we go to bus 1 right here. Oh my god. It's because I have the volume down. Of course. Sorry. So yeah, so basically, I I think these were from the room mic, so the mic that I'm speaking through right now, just sitting on the desk. Um, my guitar amp is sitting behind me, uh, next to the table, and so it's in the room with me, uh, with all the rest of the microphones and stuff. So stuff is like bleeding into each other, and I like to use some of that stuff as like ambient pieces so uh, when I was looping my guitar when I made this sound uh, it was getting uh, picked up next to me with the, the Aston Origin that's sitting on the desk here that I'm speaking into right now um, and then uh, this sample right here is directly from the 
uh, amplifier. Uh, uh, and uh, so I, I, I put that in to give like a little bit of a different, uh, less roomy texture. Like that, that just sounds, it sounds like it's closer to me, uh, and I like that, uh, that spatial, like, difference. Like having something that's in the far back, uh, and then have that same thing push forward. And using the, uh, uh, the room mic that's just sitting around here, uh, is a really good way to do that. Uh, and that's why I just keep everything recording all the time. Uh, you always uh, come up with like cool little sounds and stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, so another thing, let's show. Oh, I got my drum set up. I just have one microphone on it right now. Um, and let's turn off all stuff for it so you can hear just the raw sound this is a wa-47 uh laying on the ground underneath the drum kit um because uh, i don't have a shock mount for this microphone right now it is on order so i just laid it on the ground which was fine um but that sounds like this let me make sure I got my... Uh, is that going to the live stream out? It is going to live stream out. Okay. Let's... I am not a good drummer. <laughs> Just want to preface that. clipping. I'm going to turn my limiter back off. Sorry. Anyway, you get the you get the picture. It doesn't sound all that great. I mean, it sounds fine. If if there was a better drummer playing, uh, it would sound a lot better. Uh, let's skip to a section. Uh, I am not a drummer, uh, as you can obviously tell. Uh, but anyway, uh, after a bit, let's see. Uh, what the heck was that? All right. Oh, that's the that's the track. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, this is what it sounds like with all the stuff I did. Today. That's without. That's with. All right. Um, so yeah, I took uh, basically just a little loop from here, and then what did I do with it? Um, with with that processing, uh, uh, what I what I do with that is. Um, I make these little sampler tracks. So if I want to uh, record something, uh, I just send it to this. Uh, so I want to take that little section of the drums, uh, 
here, and I'm going to use the drums as the input for this little sample thing, and I'm going to hit the record button to enable that. And uh, let me make sure nothing else is set to record. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so yeah. So now the drums, the drum track, this right here, is being fed as an input into this little sampler track. Um, and you just get that from clicking there, go to tracks, and select the track that you want in there. So now I hit enter for the chord. So now I've got the sample with uh, all of the effects that I put on it. The channel strip I got here, um, just shaping like the tonality that I wanted out of the drum kit. Uh, I kept, I recorded everything real quiet. Uh, I even had a pad on because that, that mic, the WA-47 is super hot. It does not need much amplification. Um, uh, usually I'm having to not put any gain on it and just putting a pad on it because it is pretty loud for, especially for drums. Uh, for other stuff like vocals, I do use a little bit of gain, but it's not often necessary. It's a very, very hot microphone. Um, but yeah, uh, did a little, uh, tonal shaping there and then I sent it through this fat channel. Uh, rolled off a little bit of the lows so it tightened up uh, uh, the drum kit a little bit more because there was a little bit of rumbliness that I didn't want. I also need to tune my kit. Uh, it's not tuned right now, so it doesn't sound the best, especially that floor tom. That's great, terrible rumble. Oh my god, I keep forgetting to eat. Anyway, now I got it running through this 1176, all buttons mode. I dialed this into taste, just whatever sounded good. Um, usually, for compression, I'll um, I'll do like really heavy compression at first, and then just mess with the input and like push the sound up into the compressor to get that needle moving. And I just listen to how it's pulling stuff down. Like, uh, when the kick drum hits, I'm listening to how, like, how long it's taking for uh, it to actually compress the signal and then release it back. Um, and, and so you get, like, a little bit of movement. You're shaping the movement of the actual drum kit with that. And then I'm doing the, uh, the pull tech trick here on this little EQP1A... Um, uh, model that's uh, in Studio One. It actually sounds pretty good. It, it's not the best sounding EQP one uh, I I really prefer the UAD one, um, but uh, I don't have access to that because my brother has my Apollo right now. <laughs> so I'm just using whatever's in Studio One. And then I have a limiter on here because um, I like the sound of a limiter on drums. I think it sounds really good. I even have a second one uh, doing additional compression. Um, I got this little clipper here. Uh, oh, let me mute the sample. Yeah. So you can see I'm letting that go all the way to the top. I don't really care all that much about clipping or anything, as long as it sounds good. Sometimes clipping sounds fine. Like, don't worry about it so much. <laughs> if it sounds good, it is good. Um, but yeah, that's uh, just a little strip I got there for the, for the drums. And the way I sampled this, 
all that stuff gets printed to to the track itself. So now uh, all of that, all of those effects are on there. And that sounds pretty good. Like, it's not the best. I could probably work with the mic placement a little bit better. Uh, I just have it sitting under the floor tom, sort of pointed in between the kick and the snare, uh, and a little bit toward, rotated towards the tom uh, right now. I'm going to mess with it a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's just one microphone. Let's see. Another thing. Let's get. Let's go find us a, a more musical. Sample here, uh, from my. Uh, modular rack. So. Um, oh, and uh, you can probably see I just titled this February twenty twenty two, so everything that I do in February goes into this. Uh, even if I'm just messing around, I like to have it all in one one space so that I don't have to have like a bunch of stuff, bunch of folders to go through. Everything I did in February, I can find all in one place and I can do this sort of like sampling workflow type thing. Um, Uh, let's get something different. Go to a different day. What's this? Alright. That's a little thing I did on the mini brute. Um... I think I already released that track. Um... Uh, I think that was practice for that. Yeah, let's just take a piece of this drone here, uh, uh, and we will uh, uh, mess with it and see uh, see what we can come up with. So we will find a blank spot on our canvas here. Uh, so we'll go over here, and let's just get... We'll copy that to this. Uh, we'll go with sampler eight, since there's nothing on there for now. 
So now we have the little uh, sample. So let's print this. So I can have, uh, oh wait, no, it's fine, okay. So yeah. Do a little clip gain there. So let's figure out some cool effects to do here. I'm gonna bring up sound toys and Okay, that's kind of fun to do. Gives it a little bit of movement from side to side and pushes things into uh, different places a little bit. Um, so we can uh, mess around with that a bit. So where do we have this headed to? So we got this going to the sample bus. So I want to take this one. We're going to print to this. We're going to take whatever's on sample 8 and put it to 5.2 here. Um, so let's take our bus, our sample bus. So this audio is going to get routed to the sample bus here. Uh, and we are going to record whatever goes to this sample bus uh, onto this little track here. So we have sample bus as the input. And yeah, so we're going to mark that to record. Uh, I am going to open up MicroShift again. And I'm just going to move this knob while uh, it plays back. So we got our little drone sample. I can delete this now. We will <clears throat> take this off of the sample bus as the input and send it back to the sample bus. And then sample bus goes to mains. Oh shit, were you able to hear any of that? all these inserts on there. That's funny. All right. 
So I turned all those off. Let's just remove them, actually. Let's remove them from the other two. Because we don't really need them right now. Yeah, I don't need them. Okay. Alright. So, what should we do next? Let's, uh... Let's try out Crystallizer. See if there's anything fun we can do with that. Alright, that's pretty cool. Let's do that. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going <clears> to <throat> mess with the dry wet at first and then mess with that recycle at the, at the end there. So we're going to take uh, the sample right here. We're going to change this to mains and then take this bus, go from the sample bus, make sure this is set to go out of the sample bus. So we have this routed to sample bus here. We will set this to record. And we will open up uh, Crystallizer here. Oh my god, you guys can't see the plugins, can you? Oh. Let let me let me let me fix that real quick before I continue on. Um what do I need to do? So on Studio One template, I need to add a source. Uh, this is going to be a window capture source, and I'm going to title this plugin. And there we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, where do I want to put that? Uh, I guess that'll be fine. Uh, window match title, otherwise find window of same type. That'll probably work. Let me try opening up a different plugin. Yeah, that works. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, let me transi transition that so that you can see that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is uh, the Crystallizer plugin, so you can actually see the movements I'm making. So, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's hit record.
All right. So let's um, uh, okay. Let me change this back to none. We will put this to uh, sample bus and yeah. turn that off. So we'll mute, th mute that first sample and here we go. All right, and so yeah, I'm basically doing a destructive sampling process, and um, just re-recording stuff over and over with different effects, and I personally am moving the parameters uh, while that is happening. This is a pretty pretty simple way of doing this. Um, that way you don't have to mess around with drawing automation, which which I hate doing. I hate drawing automation. Uh, most of the automation I want to do is just this. I just want to fade stuff in, fade stuff out, and occasionally do some clip gain um, uh, with these little, uh, envelopes here, like using the gain envelope, like if I want this part to be a little bit louder, I, I put like a couple of dots here and then just like ramp that and like move it to like how I want it to be shaped or whatever. That's as much, an, uh, automation as I, I personally want to do. Uh, cause otherwise it just becomes way too complicated and you spend a lot of time uh, doing very, uh, uh, repetitive stuff, and I don't, I don't like to do that. Uh, so I like to just listen to the music and have my hands on it and actually move with it instead of trying to figure out, oh, I should ramp it up here. Oh, no, that doesn't really sound right. Uh, but yeah, I, this is, I mean, this is all right, but. I don't like doing stuff like that because then I gotta like just keep like tweaking at it and like keep going back and forth. But if I just put my hands on for a little bit and like practice it and actually get the feel for like the rhythm of the music or whatever, uh, you can do this with like any plugin too. It's just, uh, you can do it with compressor plugins. Like if you want your compressor to squeeze a little bit more in a certain section, you can like drag the threshold down like a little bit so it like saw so, uh like keeps uh, like a part like more compressed uh during certain parts and then you can open it up again like raise the threshold uh, uh, uh a little higher to open it up and so it can breathe a little bit more during this 
certain part of a song. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's do a little uh, Echo Boy thing. Uh, this is like my favorite thing. Um, just go 100% wet here. No feedback. Uh, change this to time. Increase the saturation. Let's get rid of that automation. I don't like that. That that doesn't sound very good. Maybe a little bit like that. That's fine. Uh, but yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So that's the t studio tape style. Uh, I, I really like the Echoplex, the Space Echo, and the Memory Man. Uh, uh, let's try the Echoplex first. Hear you know that metallic stuff? That sounds cool. Yeah, so you just mess around with the knobs a little bit, and, like, you can explore. It's just like Eurorack. Like, you just get in there and explore the little spaces there are uh, uh, in in all the little different positions and stuff. That's real fun. Um, yeah, and I, I like using, like, a lot of saturation on these so you can really get the character of the... Uh, 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 the machine that it's supposed to be modeling. Uh, like, let, let's try the space echo here. We'll turn the feedback down. Oh, I love that little wobble. That's great. phone call. Oh, it's my mom. 
Hold on, I gotta take this real quick. Hey, what's going on? All right, so I think uh, uh, my sample bus was not set up to be sending to the live stream, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, it is fixed now, though. Um, yeah. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can hear what I've been doing now for the past hour uh, instead of it just coming over the microphone. Uh, but yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll walk through this. We'll do this one more time. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, Echo Boy here. So let's set up... Um, this should be called Sampler. That's fine. Um, yeah, let's just record to this. Uh, so we'll take it off of Sample Bus, put it onto uh, Track... Oh, wait, what's wrong here? Okay, that one's not going to work. Let's do this one again then. For some reason, sometimes it doesn't give me all the options uh, for what I want. Uh, so I have to change it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. 
Um, let's go to um, ah crap. I I confused myself. So we're gonna take sampler. Nah, uh, the uh, where the where the heck is it? Sample bus. Okay, buses. Sample bus. There we go. All right, and that's going to the sample bus. Uh, let's arm that for recording. Take off our loop. And I will open up Echo Boy again, which you can see. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just uh, mess around with this now. Let's listen to that back. So we'll mute this, change this back to none, set the output to sample bus. And sample bus has the live stream out. Good. And yeah. That's very nice. I like that a lot. All right. Let's see. What else could we do to this? Um, we could mess around with the pitch uh, a bit. Let's see. What is it, Little Altar Boy? 
Yeah. Yeah, let's try this out. Um, let's see. Oh, let's keep it all the way wet. Oh, that was cool. I like that. All right, so let's delete what we had before. And you can see where we did the little gain adjustments. You can see those are printed in here now. But yeah, that that was pretty fucking cool, and I really liked that. So we're gonna change this uh, to sample bus uh, so I can record. Uh, and let's mess with that again. Um, yeah, I love sound toys. They're so much fun. So much fun. There's always, there's always something, uh, that I find new with them, too. Uh, like, some new sound. Like, that, those little, like, pops and clicks that were at the end of that just now. Like, that was beautiful. I loved that. Um, but yeah. Let's, uh, oh my god. I, I keep forgetting that I, I, I'm recording all my streams to my hard disk, so I have, like, a good high-quality copy to edit from. Uh, and so I've been running out of hard disk space, like, pretty quickly. Yeah, I only got 23 gigs left on my main drive where, where this is all recording to. I need to figure something out to do with that. I've got a little external drive somewhere god i keep forgetting to eat um yeah that can probably use for that but um but yeah Sorry to make you guys watch me eat. I'm starving. And I always forget to eat. That's a really bad habit. Mm. <clears throat> um. Alright. Yeah. So, let's record this one.
No, I don't think that was as magical as the first one. The, that first one was pretty magical, though. Which is why you should always be recording. Um, I can't right now because of how I have this set up, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, I should I, I should be recording all these different takes. But yeah, let's mute that and we'll listen back. Change that off. Send this back to the sample bus. And we'll listen back. Delete our original one because we are doing destructive stuff. I don't want to go back to the old stuff. I want to keep moving things forward. Echo Boy on? What is that doing? That's uh, basically like my whole workflow for uh, sampling different stuff uh, uh, that I've made. And so you just basically take, you listen back to your jams and you find like little bits and pieces that you really like. Uh, like um, uh, I found on one clip uh, on my drums... Uh, I, I hit record, and then I go place the microphone. Uh, uh, so I hit record in here, and then I go make my adjustments and stuff. Jam for a little bit, move the mic uh, uh, again, uh, jam a little bit. 
and then I come back and like listen to uh, what it sounds like in one mic position versus the other mic position, and just to like kind of narrow in like where I want the mic placement to be. Uh, but uh, one thing I took from that uh, little clip is when I set the mic down on the floor, it made this noise uh, from making contact. And it ended up being like kind of a cool little kick drum uh, 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 piece that I could use. Uh, and so I actually put that in that track. Um, let me find, find the damn thing. Um, let me see. That's one thing about this uh, this process is it can be a little bit uh, disorienting uh, because everything you got to zoom in and out and there's just tons of stuff happening. But uh, it it really helps me keep things uh, a little bit more organized though. Uh, so here's the track, and I I hide stuff a lot, uh, 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 just so it's like out of the way. But yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna play this track again. I'm still gonna keep working on this one because uh, I think there's some uh, cool stuff I could do with it. I really want to get my brother to play bass on it, like during the drum section. Uh, I think a bass guitar might be kind of cool, not to be as a, uh, a not to play the role of a bass because there's already some sub stuff going on. But having like that uh, lower, lower mid, uh, like uh, kind of tone from the bass, just kind of fuzzy and like steady, because nothing in there is actually aligned uh, properly. Like there's no tempo uh, stuff going on. Uh, like, like uh, even the drum loop, like my playing is super sloppy, and I even aligned it. So it wasn't like matching up, and I did that intentionally because I wanted it to feel off kilter, um, and and not really like it's it's not fucking pop music. So <laughs> I mean, no offense to pop music, I fucking love pop music. My favorite album of all time is actually uh, Daft Punk, uh, Random Access Memories, and I love uh, some a couple of different pop artists too, like. Justin Timberlake will always be, like, uh, uh, really awesome to me. Uh, I really admire some of the people making pop. Because there, there's just some really interesting stuff going on in there. But I, I don't make pop music. Uh, this, is, this is probably very few people like this. <laughs> but maybe you can, uh, you can find uh, some interesting stuff in here. So I'm going to play this again. And I'm going to sign off for the night. Um, uh, sorry I didn't show off my little Euro rack today, but I thought that, uh, some, some people might be interested in seeing, like, one of the possible, like, workflow, uh, things that you can do with Studio One. Uh, so yeah.
thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope I can uh, catch you in the future. Yes. out Girl Scouts and uh, may your gods uh, treat you as you have treated others. <laughs>